everybody to our open session part of the meeting. Um, can I have approval of agenda, please? Thank you. Is there any disclosures of interest? Hearing none, we're going to um, recess council for a bit and we're going to have a committee of adjustment minor variance and consent for severance application number a1-2021 and b1-2021 this is a public hearing with respect to the application for minor variance and consent for severance submitted by shirley hamilton on behalf of the incorporated synod of the Diocese of Algoma. This application is to sever a new lot from the holdings of St. John the Evangelist Church. The intent is to create the new lot currently occupied by St. John's Rectory and make it available as a single detached dwelling. The parcel to be severed where St. John's Rectory is will have an approximate width of 22.59 meters 74 feet an approximate depth of 29 or 25.95 meters 85 feet and an approximate area of 0 0.058 hectares 6275 square feet the corner parcel to be retained by st john the evangelist church at winnipeg street will have an approximate frontage of 23.1212 meters 76 feet on ontario street an approximate depth of 25.938 meters 85 feet and an approximate area of 0 0.06 hex hectares 6490 square feet <coughs> Relief is therefore sought as follows for the severed lot from the provisions of the Scriber Zoning Bylaw. Residential R R1 zone. Minimum front yard is 4.5 meters. The proposed is 4.17 <coughs> meters. The relief sought is 0 0.33 meters residential r1 zone minimum interior side yard 1.5 meters proposed 1.22 meters relief sought 0 0.28 meters residential r1 zone minimum rear yard 7.5 meters proposed 6.75 meters relief sought 0 0.75 meters a change of zoning destination is also sought for the severed lot from the institutional zone to the residential r1 zone this change can be accomplished by the committee of adjustment as a change of use variance Example institution to residential R1. Notice of the public hearing was published in the Terror Space Scriber newspaper on October 26, 2021. Notice was also posted on the township website. We will first hear from the clerk any submissions received in writing. Then we will hear those in support of the application and those opposed to the application then from the applicant all those wishing to address the application please direct their questions through the chair we have a copy of the plot plan to review is there anyone who does not understand the application we will now hear it hear any written submissions from the clerk I received no written uh, uh, submissions. Okay, there is none. Is there anyone here in support of the application? 
here. Okay, one. Is there anyone here opposed to the application? We will now hear from the applicant if she wants to speak. Um, no, I think you've covered it all. We appreciate your support if we can get the Committee of Adjustment to approve it. Okay. The committee will now make their decision regarding the above application. In terms of the uh, application, it was reviewed by the uh, planner, and um, part of his review, um, it uh, seems to be uh, meeting the conditions for the um, uh, test for minor variance, as well as uh, applicable planning legislation. So, in his perspective, this would be uh, um, uh, quite the uh, applicable application for the minor variance and consent. Want to vote on uh, applications A1 and uh, B1 2021? Yes. Okay, you don't you don't want to uh, pass that around? Um, it doesn't need to be passed around. We just need to record. Okay. Who was for it? So. Okay. All those in favor of the applicant application? Okay. Thank you. That's for five of us. Application A1 and 2021 and application B1 2021 have been approved by the Committee of Adjustment as a variance is considered minor in nature, desirable for the use of the land and in keeping with the general intent of the Township Prescriber's official plan and the zoning bylaw. No objections were received in response to the public notice. Okay, thank you. Um, we will adjourn the Committee of Adjustment meeting at 7.08 p.m. Thank you. Now we'll reconvene council meeting. Thank you, folks. Appreciate it. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Thank you Shirley. Shirley. Take care. Take care. Um, we have no delegation and minutes of the previous meeting. Resolution 284-21, moved by Councillor Morrow, seconded by Councillor Sales that the minutes of the special council meeting held October 22nd, 2021 be accepted as circulated. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Carried. <laughs> Resolution two eighty five 
dash 21. Moved by Councillor McGrath, seconded by Councillor Stafuric, that the minutes of the Council and Committee of the Whole Meeting held October 26, 2021, be accepted as circulated. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Carried. Business arising from the minutes. Resolution 286-21, moved by Councillor Morrow, seconded by Councillor Sales, that Council approved the purchase of two used 4,500 PSI Scott AP50 Scuba from M&L Supply at a cost of $2,200 excluding shipping and applicable taxes. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Carried. Resolution 287-21, moved by Councillor Stefuric, seconded by Councillor McGrath. The Council approved the attendance of Dee McGrath and Kay Mullins at the virtual 2022 Roma Annual Conference and General Meeting to be held January 24th, 25th, 2022, and that expenses be paid as per township policy. Discussion? All those in favor? Carried. What was the date on that again? Sorry. Um, 25th, I believe. January 24th, 25th. January 24th, 25th, 24th, 25th. <clears throat> Accounts for payment. Resolution 288-21, moved by Councillor Stafuric, seconded by Councillor Morrow, and that checks issued on the general bank account in the month of October 2021 in the amount of $156,000, $156,14, and 88 cents for general accounts payable be approved and ratified. Discussion? All those in favor? <coughs> Carry. Resolution 289-21, moved by Councillor Morrow, seconded by Councillor Sales. The bank debits issued in the general bank account in the month of to October 2021 in the amount of $54,385.72 for, pay for payroll be approved and ratified. Discussion? All those in favor? Gary. We have no any un we have no unfinished business. So resolution Going into other business, resolution 290-21. Moved 
Moved by Councillor McGrath, seconded by Councillor Stefuric, that bylaw 37 2021 being a bylaw to authorize the borrowing of funds for 2022 operations be given first, second, third, and final reading and enacted. Discussion? All those, all those in favor? Carried. Resolution 291-21, moved by Councillor Stefuric, seconded by Councillor McGrath, that bylaw 38-2021 being a bylaw to authorize the Township Ascriber to enter into a license agreement with Her Majesty the Queen in Right of Canada, as represented by the Ministry of the Environment, be given first, second, third, and final reading and enacted. Discussion? All those in favor? Carried. into our committee of the whole part of the meeting <clears throat> department wrote reports and committee board minutes the first one up is community economic development manager report so work on the hydro poles uh, has been started with uh, some replaced and relocated i don't know if you checked it recently mooney but <laughs> Uh, most of it is done right they changed the broken pole on the corner um they changed the uh, the the far pole near the fence that's going to be used for the guide um they haven't pulled any poles yet but when they come back to string the guide uh, apparently they're going to pull uh, uh i believe it's four poles mm -hmm. and i I had a quick conversation with Austin today and they're getting a, a hydro truck tomorrow to help them do with what they're doing with the water. So it sounds to me like they're going to be in town tomorrow. So hopefully that's the job they're doing. Okay. <clears throat> Other than that, they have the uh, RML's loader and it's been moved uh, to the old town uh, uh, lot and um, uh, no further work is really anticipated until spring next year so everything's going to be kind of all hoarded up and uh, uh, hopefully uh, we'll get uh, construction back on schedule again in spring did the equipment and everything come in like for the playground and stuff yep yeah so yep. it's just so it's ready to go yep everything is stored and ready to go yeah. hopefully everything else will you know, uh, arrive anything else that needs to be ordered. Mm -hmm. so. Where are we storing that equipment? It's there on the, uh, um, it's, it's all fenced in in the uh, okay. uh, old. Uh, it's all protected, fenced in. Yeah, town so, uh, yeah. hall. Yeah, it's still uh, bundled up. 
Okay, number two, bylaw enforcement officer report. This one, uh, the second one about uh, land maintenance bylaw violations, mm -hmm. states ongoing storing vehicles on vacant lot before the courts. Mm -hmm. um, uh, which vacant lot are we talking? Um, we can't go into any further detail because okay. it would be identifiable. I get that, yeah. Should you wish to? Uh, you know, uh, inquire any more about it, we could put in a closed session meeting. Yeah. Yep. Okay, community uh, number three, community economic development uh, meeting minutes. <clears throat> okay, I can speak to that, I guess. We had a good meeting. Uh, Some of the things that are ongoing, strategic plan, that will be working with uh, investment attraction consultant later this year. Uh, he's supposed to be uh, coming back with a report, I believe, the third week in December. That's what I have in my books. And the Discovery Center, that's final final touches are are, uh, are being done on that or that project will be completed and paid out uh, and, and we will have some apparently access to some pretty good video of our community and we'll be able to put together a promotional video. From the few shots of scene when they were putting together the video which is excellent footage from uh, uh, the gentleman they got to do all that uh, drone footage yeah. really good stuff. Yeah, I've seen some of the drone footage and it was un unbelievable. Oh, no. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, wayfinding, I guess the only the only thing less left is the municipal display signs along the, along the highway. We're waiting for MTO to get back to us on where we can put them. The new visitor brochure will be, uh, staff is working on putting together a, a brochure for for new visitors to our community. Um, A6 trail construction, that project is completed. And uh, I know there's a few people that have been out hiking it, including myself. And really well done. I encourage anybody to get out there. And, and the beauty of that hike is it, it advertises going to picnic table lookout and there is a picnic table at that first lookout but the beauty of that trail is if you just go another 100 meters down uh, Cascal Trail there's another gorgeous lookout that takes in it's a little different view of Lake Superior more of a, uh, a southern uh, a southern view of the lake Copper Island it's, uh, so it's a two for one hike and I guess that's pretty much Okay, number four. <clears throat> Thanks, Dan. Number four, beautification committee uh, minutes. Guess I could talk to that. Um, we had a meeting there last week, and uh, we discussed, actually we discussed everything. But um, we have some in memoriam cards. Um, not quite sure if they're totally printed yet or not um, and where they're going but um, we will have them out uh, for people to uh, get um, we uh, decorated their christmas tree out here in front of the town office already it's all ready to go um, we're going to coordinate it with lighting up the tree on the hill with, uh, I guess, with Gene um, for December 1st. 
Um, we were trying to get uh, the traveling trio to in right now, but not, they're not going to be ready for December 1st. I got the message last night. Um, so we'll probably just have some hot chocolate and everything. And uh, we're discussing, we have, we had some extra lights left over. And so we're, we were discussing um, putting them over um, at the Sanitap Park. Um, one of the members has talked with the Legion. The Legion, um, obviously, we just thought it could courtesy we, and they don't have a problem with lights going there as long as it's after the remembered stay of course um, we don't know if we can make that happen or not yet um, and we'll see and we've we've talked about light up the night um, planning and we do have a date for it um, we're we're looking at Sunday December 5th at six o'clock but nothing is nothing is confirmed we have one or two little issues but um, once we get them worked through then we'll uh, we'll confirm the date and uh, and we'll go from there it was uh, it was a great experience the last time, and uh, it worked out really, really well. Uh, um, <clears throat> I think it's, it'll be good. We hope we can get. Um, we're hoping to make it happen, for sure. I, I would say 80 percent, 85 percent, percent right now. And that's about it for that one. Uh, so number five would be. Um, Recreation and Festivals Committee meeting. Yeah, I can speak to that one. Then we had uh, another good meeting in November, November 1st. Uh, of course, discussing Heritage Day 2022, we're trying to get a, trying to get a good head start on, on that. Uh, festival, as we know, it's going to be a big one. Our 30th anniversary. We did have a delegation come in, and uh, their group want to host a, uh, a concert. Northwestern Ontario breaks out, and it's a celebration of all birthdays, anniversaries, and thanks to all frontline workers that kept us going through a COVID-19 pandemic. So we'll. There will be more information coming out on this, but um, the idea is to have a, a concert located in downtown Scriber with the arena as a backup in case of bad weather. So that will be in conjunction with, uh, with our street festival on that day, which is, uh, we'll start earlier this, this uh, concert. Uh, I think we'll probably start around 8 o'clock at night, not until 1 o'clock. So so some great news there. Um, we uh, were looking for uh, for nonprofits uh, to provide luncheons throughout the week. I, I, we're not having any trouble filling up filling up our schedule for those ten days. Like there's a lot of idea, a lot of good ideas, and, and more to come. So that's it for for heritage days. Uh, for a Halloween contest, we did we did vote on the winners at that meeting. There was four groups, four age groups, and the winners will be announced on Facebook. So there's, uh, there were some really good uh, submissions, costume submissions. Yeah. So it, was, it, was, it was kind of neat. That was kind of fun to to uh, to, load, to, uh, to vote on all the winners. Uh, Winter Carnival looks like, and hopefully that's going to be a goal this year. Uh, it's looking pretty good, so we're trying to get get some ideas on uh, on what to do there. Pictionary will be back. Uh, family Feud, the game Family Feud will be back. 
flying party be back and uh, possibly if the outdoor rink and that's something if the outdoor rink is in use then we may be able to have uh, some kind of event at the outdoor rink so and also uh, the committee would like to have a family skating party at the <coughs> during the holiday season sometime after Christmas So that's, uh, that's about it for that report. Okay, thank you. Good stuff. Number six, Scriber Public Library Board meetings. And it's... Anyone have any questions? We did have our Ross Court representative step down, so they're looking at trying to see if we could get another representative from Rossport so that a letter has been written to the service board I believe I see there's there's no applicants for the canvas yeah. ever and there's still no applicants <laughs> still no for, applicants for a uh, I think a great part-time job I would think <laughs> for anyone between the ages of 15 and 30 that might be listening and want to work 15 roughly 15 hours a week yeah. until your contract's up it's a pretty sweet job and it's shocking that there's been no applicants like what what uh, I mean it, it says that advertising continues like are we advertising in all the normal yeah, I think she's out. She's in the high school. She's yeah, in so the, it's in the page. It's she's from all. Lack, it's all over. Not from lack of advertising. It's just there's no interest. No. Which is the challenge. And I told and I I explained that it, what it's not just because it's the library. Yeah. It was a chance to challenge everywhere. It was we had trouble oh, filling yeah. our summer students. We didn't get to fill them all. So I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just the way it is. It's just kind of sucks. Yeah. So if you know anyone, though, you should open it up to seniors, maybe. <laughs> Not a bad idea. I know in the Tourist Information Center in Terrace Bay, there were some seniors working in there. Fall into the age category. All right. Yeah. The funding would depend on. Yeah. I guess. Okay, thanks for that, Dave. Um, anybody want to, we can do seven, eight, and nine. That's the awkward reports. Anybody got anything picked out in, in any of them? Nothing jumped out at me. Nothing, eh? It's an update. We have a new uh, operating manager of uh, Patrick Albert switch to Patrick Tour. And you don't remember his name? Yep. Other Patrick. Patrick Patrick. Mm -hmm. What's his last name? Couture. C O U T U R E. Yep. Patrick Albert's taken over more of the uh, uh, under Bay side of things, and Patrick Couture is in the this uh, I believe from here, Manitowoc. He's from Mark Bay. One thing. Yeah. So was here like somebody like in that position? They're here on a regular basis, or how does that work? They, they travel in between. If anything, if anything major pops up, right. they come into here, but they're right. not. They're not. They're not part of the regular staff at this location. They take care of multiple <clears throat> water plants for municipalities nearby. So they're, <laughs> so are you saying they're only here when there's an emergency? No, they do visit on a regular basis, but since they have multiple plants that they're looking yeah. at, they go in between to sure. recycle between all those plants. Okay. Okay, hearing no more discussion on the water report, the water sewer reports, uh, move right into question period. 
questions. No questions, mm -hmm. Nathan? Okay, well, communications. Number one was interesting. Mm -hmm. Is that something that concerning for you miss Polly in any way, Nathan? No. Well, according to this, right, it's stating that it's um, underperforming and they're calling for, you know, an inquiry as into why that's the case, right? So, um, I can tell you as a municipal employee, yes, it is concerning. As a municipal employee, <laughs> it would be, but as a municipality, yes. Yeah. As, so, uh, yeah. as, yeah, as a municipality, right, it's... Um, it, 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 you do want when you say homers to perform well. It is one of the would you say perks in order to attract right. uh, employees. So um, again, though, it's a it's it's a very very high level kind of discussion going on here, stating that I guess in uh, QP's views there are some red flags they've noticed and uh, they just want to yeah. get answers. So we want to pass this motion they're talking about here. That's uh, or, it's up to you to look into this. It's right. It's the the, the recommendation all they put again is it's at a it's a it's at a very high level. I mean, they did do some third party review from uh, this uh, PBI actuarial, actuarial consultants, which uh, they also stated that they think that, that uh, there's a significant gap in performance between OMERS and other comparable public pension plans and funds. So it's not like um, they unilaterally just decided, you know, that they thought that it was an issue. So who, who would comprise this so-called third-party expert review business, you think? Yeah, that, that would have to be, in terms of how that's going to be done, that's going to be quite interesting because, I mean, owners, I guess, would have to be willing to mm -hmm. Uh, house a third party review everything in terms of um, the governance again for that that is something that I would have to look into and research if that's uh, what you're interested in knowing how um, how Homer's is governed This could also be something that you want to just watch and see if you know other municipalities are how they're supporting as well, or you commit to how you want to respond. Mm -hmm. The same, the same uh, correspondence was sent out to uh, neighboring municipalities as well. Right. Well, did it not go to all the municipalities in Ontario? I imagine so. Right. Yeah, I imagine so. <clears throat> Number two is interesting. Uh, it's, uh, <clears throat> the highway out by Rainbow. Uh, yeah, they're finally going to straighten it out. It's a bad, bad patch of highway, especially, especially in the winter time. <clears throat> going going down after the park, eh? Yeah. And down and down around through that S curve. Yeah, I always thought it would go up. I was totally surprised when I seen this. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, it's gonna be straight right out. Eh? It's gonna be south of this area now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think. I mean, you can if you glance down, you <laughs> glance down the hydro line and kind of have an idea where it's. Going yeah. Out. Yeah. Yeah. I think you'll probably see a lot of that happening. I heard that uh, Steel River, you know, where you go down there, it's supposed to be straightened out too. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. That's for sure. It's taking a few lives. Mm -hmm. Namely, a 
and uh, DSAP board meetings. Nothing really. Nothing. Nothing. Nobody jumped out at me there either. Okay, well, let's move into unfinished business then. Um, minister's delegation requests. Definitely the one we need to have is uh, Minister of Energy. Um, in order to at least uh, try to move forward uh, with the Oxford Power Project. Is there any other ones you want to? I see. I definitely want, I'm not giving up on uh, I think we should uh, talk to Ministry of Infrastructure again. Okay. Yeah. That's a nice suggestion. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we got some news from her, but we should be talking, uh, definitely talking to her about um, our sewer project. And, and uh, our Ontario Street Water Project, that, that project's got to go. That's it's, it's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's got to go. So we got to get some funding. Mm -hmm. Anyway, any anything else to jump up at you? Dan? No, I think that's. That's a good place. Uh, those are good two good two good suggestions. Uh, we currently do have applications that are being reviewed by Ministry of Infrastructure or ICFP Greenstream for that Ontario relining. So yeah, um, would be good to touch base on that. Yeah, and we go. We got to call into. Uh, Patty's office too. Too, she's I'm trying to schedule going that. Get back to us here by Friday. Okay. So I just have a little bit of a talk. Okay. We'll we'll get them ones. Uh, we'll get them ones written up. They got to be written up by the fifteenth, I believe it is. So. Um. Scriber Public Library Memorandum of Understanding. So at a staff meeting last uh, Monday, it was Monday, and um, we uh, put together a uh, draft based on the uh, um, document that was uh, had a legal review done from Terrace Bay, and um, uh, staff also reviewed it in order to put in whatever components um, uh, we believe needed to be amended and changed. So th at this point, we have a draft that's uh, been put forward for council to review. If there's no questions, concerns, or anything that the council wants changed, my next steps would be to take this draft and uh, um, uh, send it to the library for feedback. Once the library has put, you know, their comments, whatever they want, and I'll get that draft back for council to review again. Yeah, I think that's where we're at then. I mean, the good thing with Hopefully with this agreement, I mean, it was passed in Terrace Bay, so, you know, we know that everything that's put in here has been on the table for another municipality and had, you know, full legal review, so hopefully this should move uh, fairly quickly. This just covers off everything that's been happening over the, yes. with the library over the years. Nothing, nothing new. That's yeah. And of course, there's going to be, what do you say, some unique components to our library, right? And yeah. Our library board should be uh, 
would be able to cover all those unique elements again. The whole point again of an MOU is uh, just reaching that common understanding between both parties on how things should operate, right? So. There's a, there's a statement here under this here where it says that the board, the library board, will adhere, <coughs> or pardon me, the board will not knowingly place the township under any undue risk. Like, what do they mean other than monetary risk? What, what, are we, what risk are we talking about here? In terms of risk as a municipality, right, there's, there's, we got unfortunately all kinds of risks from, again, um, a lot of it is covered by our general liability. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's just a bit of contract jargon that's uh, put in, in, in pretty commonplace in these contracts. I mean, it is, it is also pretty common sense that no one no one would intentionally, you know, want to put, act rec recklessly, you know, uh, to put the municipality at risk. But that is pretty commonplace in contracts. Let's put that in. Right. <coughs> well, it's, it's, I guess it's rather broad scope, let's say. Yeah, it is, for, <laughs> it is broad scope. So I guess, yeah, send it off. Yeah. Okay. We have no other business. So that's it, folks. That's uh, the end of the meeting. Resolution 292-21, moved by Councillor Morrow, seconded by Councillor Stafuric, that the meeting now adjourns at... 747. All those in favor?